gang culture and the violence that surrounds it is gripping the streets of London. And the young people caught up in it are the collateral damage in this dangerous world. The gang's voices are always stronger because that's what washes your brain up. During the course of filming, contributors to this series have been sent to jail for knife possession, shot, and stabbed to death. This is the normal life of a teenager. I'm fretting about my grandkids. I do not want to get that phone call. In the same period, 90 teenagers were stabbed in the capital. 17 of them lost their lives as a result. I'm 16 and I've seen six people get stabbed and killed. And the resulting death and loss is destroying families. They did come to kill my son. He's not coming back. The sway of gang culture is having a dangerous and devastating effect on the young and impressionable. All it takes is that one wrong move for you to be dragged in into a whole new world that you don't want to be involved in. And with more and more vulnerable young people falling into the web of this violent culture. I die, I Where is the system? You got to stop these gangs. Growing up in Britain has never been more dangerous. Yeah, now you got to flick you. Fam, I will match work with that flick you. On September 3rd, 2015, Shaquan Fearon was tragically stabbed to death in Brockley, South London, six weeks before his 18th birthday. Amen. No more premature death. Amen. No more early death. Shaquan was not in a gang and had a bright future ahead of him. But the all-pervasive gang culture that has young people carrying and using knives made him yet another young victim of the lifestyle. At the funeral, it's like I was literally speaking to him and he was just speaking to me. One day we'll all meet you yes. with laughter, yes. with joy. When it was going on, he's saying to me, Mom, this is it. Let go. I'm going. <laughs> saying to me, Mom, let go. It's like he was saying, let it go. I'm gone. <laughs> Shapan, rest in peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Such a good child. From you to last a good child. It's really hard. Really, really hard. This part of southeast London is particularly afflicted by young street gangs, with 16 of them said to be active across the borough of Lewisham. Shaquan was on his way to this youth club when he was killed. Who would have thought? Like, seeing someone like, you always see, like, and you don't see no more, it's just weird. Shaquan's old school friend Cairo was with him minutes before he was killed. His decision to head to a music studio instead of the local youth club with Shaquan still troubles him. Yeah, around here is where he died, in it? Like, this is where they had a the little fight and brawl out and they say he got stabbed. Stabbed for no reason. Shaquan's mother Sharon works just a few hundred meters away. She rushed over to his side as he lay dying. It was so bad. It wasn't a nice thing to saw him on the floor with so much blood. When I seen his eyes going over, that's when I started to scream. I know my son hear me when I cried out. That cry will never go in vain. The boys accused of murdering Shaquan, who were 15 and 16 years old at the time, were known locally for carrying knives. Even Cairo had a run-in with them. I had my own little problems with them, innit? I had my own little madnesses I've had with them. It would have been different if, like, I never went in the studio that day. If I came up there, it probably wouldn't have happened, innit? But I could obviously tell the youths, no, that can't run, innit? Or I don't know, it could have been me getting stabbed. I don't know, man. In 2015, there were 81 incidents of knife crime involving young people in the borough of Lewisham alone. 
gang culture is having a very real and increasingly dangerous effect on the community. Well, I'm 16 and I've seen six people get stabbed and killed. I don't know how to feel something like it's too normal. I've lived it for my whole life. It's, the, it's all I've seen since I've grown up. You know, I could have just been living a normal life for a teenager. But then again, this is normal life for a teenager. To gain further insight into this culture and its harsh realities, a current London gang member shared with us why he believes in the need to carry a knife. I love my knife, so that because if I'm lacking out about now, then I could get my knife on. They have their knife on them, I get fucked up. I've seen death come towards me, and I've been smart about it. I've moved away from the car. And they say you bought it, but why am I so? Just be using that wisely. If you're on the road, then obviously you can't be scared. People that are beefing, if you're scared when they come towards you, then what are you going to do? You're just going to be sitting there, right? Then you're getting caught up on the dead. But these roads are mad. It's been months since Shaquan Fearon was murdered, and his mother Sharon still has her own memorial to him in his room. She wants to keep his presence close to her at all times. So this is Shaquan's room. Ah, oh, this is Shaq. Like a room. So this is my temple. This is where I come and pray. It just surprised me, myself to know that my son is gone and I'm standing here I think my son is coming back and I, he's not coming back oh Jesus why oh God it just happened just like that Knife crime is becoming normalized and a gateway for young people to enter into gangs, ruining lives across the capital. With teenagers thought to be one of the biggest groups responsible for an estimated 130,000 knife attacks in London over the past five years. These street gangs are spreading fear in their communities. When you see their parents crying for their son because their son's dead, you sit down think about, if I had to look at my mum, I'd be making my mum cry like this. It's like, and because I've been in so many situations where I've nearly got stabbed and like my mum's keeps like she's scared because it keeps on getting to a point. As she said, the next time it happens, she just knows I'm going to get stabbed and something bad's going to happen. Mom, you're just too good. Cairo lives with his mother Shireen, and at 16 years old, has seen six of his friends stabbed and killed. I've always thought about a normal life of a 16 year old, but I've never seen it because most all of my friends live the same life as me. This is normal for us. I've grown up knowing that my life is to deal with what I have to deal with. Last game, girl trying to vince me. Mm -mm. Let me in free. Alright, sorry, can you call me Wimpy? Wimpy. Remarkably, Kyra knows a further nine people who have survived stabbings. Gang culture and the resulting knife crime has him and his friends fearing for their lives. It makes a person not want to be outside no more, don't want to do stuff anymore. Like, places I go, it could be my house. Well, my girl's house, you know, you just have those little places where you go to keep yourself out of certain places so there's more but less a chance of you getting stabbed or killed. It's even like on your way going to the studio, you could have something happen. On your way going to my girl's house, there's something happen. There's areas where they can't go. What do you mean you can't go there? Nah, I'm not going there, it's all right. They don't want to go there. Maybe there's people there that don't like them because of the area they come from. So there's certain areas, no, he won't go to. Shireen is aware of how difficult it is for her son, but struggles to come to terms with just how commonplace a violent death has become for his generation. How much people do we know that's died? Yeah, there was there was Neef, there was Neef and there's Shaq, there's Muhammad, and Jamal that died. I'm trying to remember, there's a couple more people that I know. Yeah, that's way too much. No, not in my lifetime. I've been of that age, and people just dropping dead around me. You like you have to wonder. Who's going to die next? You have to look at each other and say, you're wrong, man. I don't matter if you're nice or not these days. Because everybody is trying to 
it's any time there's a fight, no one doesn't know to just use their hand. Everybody wants to always do the coward thing. No, no, but it's because you know that someone else is gonna have it. It's like you have to. It's not even a thing that you can say yes or no to. It's like you have to be about that life, or you're just gonna be a. You're just gonna get bullied. Mum. <laughs> but Shireen is also aware that given the increasing danger on the streets, young people are taking drastic measures to protect themselves. I'm not naive to what's going on out there. I know what these boys do. I just, I know. I'm a person, no, I check my knife on my jaw. And like some people don't. If you ask them, they don't know. Um, how many knives or what's gone missing? I know what's missing. Aunt's camera. We're going to Josh, see something missing. I'm calling his name with the knife. Shireen is trying desperately to keep Kyra away from gangs and knives. I don't know. I just act like I'm a detective in my house. I always just go around looking, searching. To me, if I want to, if I feel like something don't feel right, I'll go in your room. I would turn it upside down and look for everyone what I need to look for. I know every hole, every corner in my house where you think you might hide it, I know it. Mothers like Shireen are rare in understanding how street life, gangs and violence work. But she is desperate it does not impact on her son. All it takes is that one wrong decision, that one wrong move. That, that's all it takes for you to be dragged in into a whole new world that you don't, you don't want to be involved in you never thought you'd be involved in. Nowadays, kids are getting involved because they're becoming someone's younger. Like, I could see someone out there and say, oh, I'm gonna, like, you can become, become my younger and do all my running around for me. And that's how people are getting involved. So that way, if a man can't get me, he sees my younger, he's gonna stab up my younger. Three months after Shaquan's violent death, Sharon finally faced the teenagers accused of murdering her son. You see, you see both of them? Yeah. How did they look? I'm coming out like really cocky. It's like there was laughing. It's like they, they, they come in like they're, they're a bully. You could see. You could see it on them, they are a troublemaker. I really feel like I didn't want to just look in their face and ask them why, mm. what for, why. When I look at them to see these two boys, yeah, two child. When I look at them properly as a mom, I feel so bad to know that two child charged for murder and just coming out like it's a fun, like it's a joke. What was their plea though? Not guilty. All for them? Yeah. Do you know what, though, that probably works out better because they'll both get murdered and attempt to murder them. If one of them said guilty and one of them said not guilty, then the charge was to come off. But now if both gone guilty, not guilty, they handed themselves in. They will pay for it. They have to go down. Prior to Shaquan's death, having already known multiple friends murdered and afraid of being targeted by gangs himself, Cairo made a fateful choice to no longer live like a victim in his own neighborhood. I got caught with a, as they, a knife, but as they say, an article, a, a sharp point article blade. They never caught it on me. They caught it like down the road, but I knew it was mine and it had my fingerprints on it, so there was no lying. Then I got caught again, like two months later with the same thing. At the age of 14, Kyra was given a 12 month supervision order for carrying a knife. At that moment of, in my life, I was getting threatened and all of those things there. So I was like, yo, I have to have this, my car. Anyone, at any moment in my life, someone could try to kill me. Cairo was also influenced to carry a knife as a means of protection by the older boys in the community who were on the fringes of gang life. The way they made it seem like it was the right thing to do, they never ever said to us, like, yo, you shouldn't do this, this is not good. You'll go get arrested, go to jail. They never told us that, did us made it seem like this life was decree and everything was going great for them. With the added fear and the pressure of older voices, some vulnerable young people are all too easily inducted into the world of gangs. Some people just want to be part of something and then you just step into it. You don't know where it's going to take you. Uh, I stepped into it by accident and it took me places I didn't want to go and it's a test of character as well. 
some people get caught up in the wrong life and then but it don't end all of them. A test of character that former gang member Jordi knows all too well. As a member of the Woolwich Boys gang, he set up a drugs network selling heroin and crack cocaine in London and Hampshire. Before his empire came crashing down, his lifestyle brought him both money and respect. I thought I was gonna get 2,200 every day until I, I died. A year after the fall of his drug operation, the police finally brought charges against Jordi in 2015 for intent to supply Class A drugs, though he thought he might still beat the rap. Trying to threaten me that I'm possibly looking at two to four years and all that. I don't want to be hearing that. I'm sure I'm going to bust it. I'm sure I'm going to, I'm going to bust it, but yeah, man, it's, it's, it's not looking healthy, is it? For almost a decade, Jordi enjoyed the proceeds of his criminal exploits, but the reality of his lifestyle has finally caught up with him. I do, I, I do regret it though about shutting to the people that are selling death because I started realising that all these people are killing people. The stakes have been raised and Jordi now has to face charges at Crown Court. You have just pleaded guilty to uh, two counts of uh, possession of intent. So yeah, uh, basically I'm looking at jail, isn't it? No matter what I say it is, I'm looking at jail. That's what it is, isn't it? He now faces the prospect of a serious jail term for his years of gang activity. It's a path that was determined by the choices he made as an impressionable teenager. The voices of the gangs are always stronger than the family's voices because if the gang's voices were stronger, half of the things that your family were telling you, you would listen. But the gang's voices are always stronger because that's what washes your brain out. They wash your brain with lies and this and that, and that's what, that's what it's supposed to do, because that's their job. In the borough of Lewisham, New Cross, known as Ghetto to some young locals, is one of the toughest neighbourhoods in London and has a long history of gang-related problems. She says she wanna flex with some young man. Says she wanna flex with me. She wanna flex. She says she wanna flex with some bad you. Says she wanna flex with me. Today, for many young people regrettably caught up in the slipstream of the culture, music plays a pivotal role in them finding a way to escape its pull. Music is my life and that's it's how it's always going to be. Music is a thing that will calm me down and get me hyped. Music is an emotional thing. It can bring you to certain places. Music can bring you around the world. When you start hanging with people that are doing good and see them going far places, you're like, oh, man, I want to be a part of this. I want to be a part of the change. Cairo is part of a music collective called PHSB, along with one of his best friends, Myron, also known as M. Dot. Real chief owns a tantrum. All a girl want to do is just FaceTime. I'm sorry, B, I got seven. For Cairo and Myron, this studio has represented a safe haven for them and others in an area unfortunately renowned for gang-related violence and local beefs. When did I say that? <laughs> I said anybody. You said many. What, let me solo it. No, I said it. Floor. Many. All a girl want to do is just FaceTime. I'm sorry, B, I got Samsung. Many body. <laughs> Let me say it again. Let me Many body. It again. Many body want it. No, you're playing, man. Shut up, man. She said I'm too rolled, but I'm happy. As expected from two teenagers, the boys are immersed in the fun of future dreams and their hopes of becoming music stars. I'm sorry, B, I got Samsung. Many body fat. Fam, I keep saying it now because you said that. However, the presence of gangs outside of the four walls of their studio still pose a clear and present danger to the lives of young people like Cairo. So the people that are dying around you, it's getting too close, so you fear that's going to be you next. Or someone like one of my best friends, like, I don't know, man, I don't know what if I would do if like one of my guys that like, probably flip out, go crazy. I messed up a couple, but like, let me go again, let me go again. It's the first day of the murder trial for the two teenagers accused of killing Shaquan Firon. For the 
first time, Sharon heard explicit details of how her son Shaquan was killed. Did you see the knife? Yep. But when we were coming out, it was on the desk. Okay, maybe show you up the front more. So that's how I get to see it, and that was horrible when I see the glimpse the knife, I see the knife, and oh my God. I've looked at the knife, and I've cried. I've cried, and I've said, why? When I saw that knife, and I was telling myself, why is it I'm shaking? My body was just literally shaking, and I'm trying to calm myself and I'm just imagining the knife going inside my son. For a child to be carrying a knife like that, oh, that's just like a gun. For teenagers in this environment, carrying a knife is deemed essential, but it's governed by a code of silence and secrets. Your kid could be in a house all smiling and joking, when he leaves the, leave the house, it's a completely different thing. So, and that's a, that's, a, that's a lot of people. That used to be me when I'm in a house. Like, my mum never knew what I was up to. My dad never knew what I was up to. Like, I was just the perfect child in the house. But as soon as I left, all my mates and that, going to like parties at two, three in the morning, all of that stuff, you're stabbing people there, here, all over the place. Going back home, eating Sunday dinner and all of that. No one knew any different, man. That's, that's how it is. Yuru Oye used to be in the gang. He's now a leading mentor who helps active gang members reassess their lives. Despite a legal case looming, Jordi is trying to turn his life around and step away from his checkered past. Where do you think you're at in terms of like your transition from roadman to a real man, so to speak? Uh, I'm a better man now. I don't do them things no more. I, just... I, think, I think definitely you've come a long way since obviously all of that has happened. You're, you're still on that journey of change so there's certain people that you can't have around you and that's that's just the honest truth the only person that's made a significant change in my life would probably be i think like juro juro inspires change by helping gang members to get legitimate jobs and set up their own businesses the reason why i stopped i was thinking bro do i want to get nicked again do i want to keep getting that? like i don't want to do this no more i'm trying to be someone I'm trying to be different. I want to be a different. I want to, I want to make an impact. I want to do a lot of things in life. When you will speak of what he is, I will tell you of things to come. He will give me glory because he will take what With I these see. new influences in his life, Geordie feels he's now on the right path as he knows that escaping gang life often boils down to two choices. You need to choose what you want to do. That's what I'm saying to you. It's Joe or yo, dead in it. It is what it is. That's the road. That's, that's, that's what it is. That's what's going to happen. Despite his efforts to make a change, his lifestyle and choices eventually caught up with him, as Jordi was sentenced and sent to prison for just over two and a half years for intent to supply Class A drugs. The reason why I don't regret it, living that gang lifestyle, is because I want to show people that it wasn't worth it. I survived it, and now this is my time to tell everyone, yo, this ain't worth it. I feel like I've got a message and a story to tell now, to stop other people going in there. I can say so many less from just my story. Jordi had the support to transition away from being in a gang. But for the majority leaving the lifestyle behind, it's not as simple and straightforward. It's not that easy for everyone to say you can just get up and leave. You can't drop everyone you know, anywhere I go, everywhere I know somebody. And all that I constantly think of is, have I done something to that person? I've seen a few of my friends try leave this life or go do their music or whatever. Like they think they're safe, two twos now, they come back to London, come back to wherever. And that's just it, they're just dead. In Broccoli, despite the harrowing experience of having to sit through the trial of her son's murder, normal life has had to continue for Sharon. What are you coming? I think it's eight. All right. Sharon and others in the community are desperately trying to understand what can be done to stop the serious gang-inspired violence that is cutting these young lives short. I'm fretting about my grandkids. I do not want to get that phone call. That, oh, come quick, your grandson. I don't want that. And you're wondering who is next. I'm just wondering why is it so much weapon going into school? So there is no rules. 
it seems that the school them just let the kids everybody just get on with what happening so this is what happening now it's too much open the net is open so the kids then do what they want to do something needs to be done and it's like kids is growing on their own the fear and frustration that mothers like sharon feel stem from the acceptance and prevalence of knife use in the community the gang is going on, but the system is not doing anything to stop this. Come on, you know gang is here. You need to sit out here to see when the gang them come out in the daytime, summer, especially in the summertime, to see in areas where you know it's going on like that. You need to come out and to see where the route is and then try to pull it down. Where is the system? Where is the system? You got to stop this gang. It's sad, so sad. But teens are still being drawn into gangs. With the problem being that once they're in, many feel it's simply too difficult to get out. I can die any day now. If people are onto you, then your life's basically getting shortened. From back in the day, I've been on the road to that. So when I started to really get into it, I couldn't really get out of it. But there was no point. If I had my time to get out of it, I would have got out of it. Now, when you're young, it will start with stuff like these type of nice or wrong kitchen, something like that. As you get to an OG, I'm there to say, then you will grab a gun in car. If you're like a big man, you're only out of a knife to them. Why you still do them on these roads? Cairo and vulnerable young boys like him are entangled in the lifestyle. Their close proximity to this dangerous world in turn creates doubts about exactly where they stand. Carol, you're not in the gang. You might you might call yourself something or you got you might you got a music group, that's that's called something. But it's not a gang thing, just got a lot of people that are friends. It's not often like we're going out causing trouble. It's something like with normal friendship. But now after you know police and everyone else will call it gangs because with the young black boys in the group, man. What does it look like to you? Ain't got no backbone, no, 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 no. Look at them side, man, there. Cairo's music collective, PHSB, have assembled on the Ward Pecker estate to film a new music video for the artist Wallace Dantes, featuring M. Dot. The video shoot settings for um, a new song. Not my song, but um, M. Dot, and he's in my group, so we're out here supporting him for his video shoot. Loads of things coming this year. It's all yeah. Though they are just teenagers, PHSB have an impressive following on social media. They are hoping success will get them out of their environment and challenge many stereotypes. That's how we bring the hood together, that's how we got everyone together. Uh, bring us up on positive today. And even though some people might not think it's positive, it's not positive, man, because we're not out there doing. Imagine this, we're out here making music. Out of the hood, I've got five ways. Tech girl higher than hybrid. One time and I only go by what I say. Friday man, my definition of a Friday. Sad man, sad like shit. What? Sad man can't come to my pit. Go ready, go ready, they won't settle shit. You are part of the part in your pit. Wanna come par with the kids? I go up one of them. Choosing to shoot a scene inside one of the blocks, they come face to face with the stereotyping that still condemns any gathering of young black boys as potential trouble. Kyra and Myron are used to being insulted in this way when seen together with their friends. She was just probably on a bad day or something. I don't know, man, but it's because some people in the block, you know, when they see all of us in a the block, they don't like it because that's what they live in. It. Everyone has their mouth to talk in it, so they're free to talk what they want to talk. But we know what we know and we're going to go as far as we want to go. Mm, probably go further than her and her, man. Oh, man. She's living in the block, man. We're trying to get out of the block. She's still in the block. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. We're trying to get out of the block. No way. Yeah, we're not even famous. That's making me feel good, isn't it? Like, we'll do something good. So, yeah. We just need to keep on doing it. One day we'll be there. One day we'll get everyone out of the hood. One day we're going to do it. Man. The boys are in good spirits. But just a day earlier, things were very different for Cairo and his friends. Me, I'm away to video shoot. The doggy them. 
It was the first day of filming for the music video. The shoot was in Catford, also in the borough of Lewisham, and an area they know has dangerous gangs. I'm young and I go with my friends, I go over there because I know that if there's a chance of anything happening, I've got my friends there to back me up and it's not because we're a gang or we're going out to cause trouble, it's just because we know something might happen and we just want to be able to protect ourselves from anything that happens. His mother Shireen suspects the lengths Cairo and his friends will go to protect one another. Cairo had carried knives. He carried knives on numerous occasions. He'd have a word swearing for his knife. He hadn't told, he hadn't um, told me he's swearing for his life, but obviously why are you carrying a knife for? But she is accepting of the harsh reality that Cairo's life is regularly in danger and that in his world, different rules apply. I'm not one of those parents that are, no, not my son, not my child, we never do that, no. Because being and truly, when he is outside, yeah, they can get up to anything that you don't know. They can hide things from you. Be all nice when they come home, yes, mom, did it, mom. And then you're out on the road and your son gone, man. The video shoot is in a multi-story car park in the town centre. As Cairo and his friends look on, everything is running smoothly. But something soon has them sensing danger. The boys are circling where we were filming and we kept on seeing them circling and it felt like they, were, they kept on seeing them like someone was plotting on us. No, there's some youths circling, they're standing there. The group get more nervous as people disappear into the shadows and then reappear. They're still standing there, but they're just standing around there. And I saw them, one came standing right here. Something was happening, so we kept on going out to check. And uh, in the middle of a video, we kept on moving about, moving where because we didn't know what these boys were planning because we could see them just circling. And true, we know that certain boys don't like us. We just know that we have to always keep on point, always be wary of our surroundings. Look, 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 look. The boys were fearful that they were being set up to be attacked by a local gang. See, they're still standing there. They're still standing there. With Cairo and his friends seemingly trapped, the situation takes a dramatic turn. Yeah, now you got the flicky. I will mash work with that flicky, you know. In Catford, Cairo and friends fear that they were being set up to be attacked by a gang, watching them at their video shoot. It's just under there. Feeling under threat, a flick knife was quickly produced. Yeah, now you got a flicky! Fam, I will mash work with that flicky, you know. Eventually, the boys looking on, back off and Cairo and his friends finally relax. But Cairo's readiness to use a knife after his previous convictions for carrying one is a worrying sign. Even though he was compelled by fear and danger, it was one bad choice too many. Four months after the music video incident, Cairo is arrested for a third time for possession of an offensive weapon. In March 2016, he is sentenced to six months in youth custody. This is the first time Cairo has been sent to jail. But his journey to prison was insignificant compared to what was about to happen to his close friend Myron just six weeks later. Two boys aged 15 and 16 are being questioned by detectives investigating the fatal stabbing of a 17-year-old during a fight in New Cross. He's been named by friends as aspiring rapper Myron Yarde, known as M.Dot. In an all-too-familiar tale following an altercation with a group of boys, Myron was stabbed whilst on Camplin Street, New Cross. One fatal blow was all it took to end his young life. On the Woodpecker Estate, a community once again gathers to remember and celebrate 
a young life lost. As a talented artist, Myron attended a performing arts college, a world away from knives, guns, and gangs. But this inescapable culture in his environment was the root cause of his death. This culture makes it normal for teenagers to use knives to settle the most minor of quarrels. Myron's friends are still struggling to come to terms with his senseless killing. Hello. How are you feeling about the whole Myron situation? That, as a whole, the whole thing? It just feels mad like I've been telling all that guy I was with was with every day and I planned the future with him, like, in music wise, that he's gone, I'm never gonna see him again, innit? It just feels weird and it don't feel good. I'm not gonna feel that before I actually come out and then I'm not so bad, innit? I'm mad, innit? Mm hmm. Do you have any regrets? Yeah, not being there, that's being with him, man. If I never had the. I never came in, I probably would have been there, wouldn't Yeah, you can regret yeah. going to jail. Yeah. Hard, isn't it? In the wake of Myron's death, conflicting voices in the community highlight the difficult choices that these young people have to make. There's like M.Dot's family that want justice and things like that. And then there's the oldest telling us, yeah, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. It's the environment, innit? Like, if we're gonna start, we're gonna, we're gonna come back to the hood every day, we're gonna come back to the girls every day, we're gonna hear the elders in our ear tell us, what, you man ain't done nothing, go do this, go do that. And we're gonna go on the roads and then there's gonna be parents like, rah, like, don't go out there, don't do the same, cherish them. Like, it's too much messages through our head, like, it's too much to do. Myron's friends can see how his murder is affecting the community, and they fear for the future. Everyone's scared, I swear everyone's scared. People are just not thinking and like that. When one person dies, everyone from that side thinks have retaliation. They're gonna retaliate. You're gonna hear someone from them sides die. You understand? That's how just bodies keep on getting dropped and it's just not gonna change. It's just gonna keep on. I think it's gonna get worse. The cost of gang culture is not just being felt in terms of lives lost, but also families being shattered. After seven months and three attempts to convict those accused of killing her son, Sharon has been given the news she has been hoping to avoid. The liaison officer called me and said to me that the CPS was saying that I cannot go for another trial. They think we don't need a third trial because the jury failed twice to reach the verdict. No, I can't live with it. I can't live with it. These two boys are supposed to be just walk through the door just like that. And my child life is gone. From the start to the end, it's on the CCTV straight. An eyewitness was there who saw them and the jury failed twice to reach the verdict and the system also fails. Where is the justice? Is that the law? Is that the rule? I am here and I will fight for my son. I need justice. Justice, it has to happen for my son, for Shaquan. It's a massive blow to a mother seeking a sense of meaning in the tragic loss of a child. But her resolve is unwavering. Justice has been done, but she wants a better outcome. All of the problem, it's about gang and drugs. You understand? So it will continue if it doesn't have a solution. It have to have a stop. Because if you have kids, you will never want your kids to die in vain just like that. Come on. Enough is enough. I swear everyone's scared. God forbid, but who's he gonna take next? That's that's just what I think. Like it's like we're losing everyone that was close to us.
And if you or anyone you know has been affected by any of the topics raised in this program, go to channel5.com slash gangland for more information and support. In just a moment, Major League Confrontation for the Campaign will take it away, crew. Stay with us. It's not because we're a gang or we're going out to cause trouble. It's just because we know something might happen and we just want to be able to protect ourselves from anything that happens. His mother, Shireen, suspects the lengths Cairo and his friends will go to protect one another. Cairo has carried knives. He carried knives on numerous occasions. He had a word swearing for his knife. He hadn't told, he hadn't um, told me swearing for his life, but obviously why are you carrying a knife for? But she is accepting of the harsh reality that Cairo's life is regularly in danger and that in his world, different rules apply. I'm not one of those parents that are, no, not my son, not my child, we never do that, no. Because being really truly, when he is outside, yeah, they can get up to anything that you don't know. They can hide things from you. Be all nice when they come home, yes, mom, did it, mom. And then you're out on the road and your son gone, man. The video shoot is in a multi-story car park in the Tums. <laughs> Such a good child. From you to last a good child. It's really hard. Really, really hard. This part of southeast London is particularly afflicted by young street gangs, with 16 of them said to be active across the borough of Lewisham. Shaquan was on his way to this youth club when he was killed. Who would have thought? Like, seeing someone, I like, always see, like, and you don't see no more, it's just weird. Shaquan's old school friend Cairo was with him minutes before he was killed. His decision to head to a music studio instead of the local youth club with Shaquan still troubles him. Yeah, around here is where he died in. In the wake of Myron's death, conflicting voices in the community highlight the difficult choices that these young people have to make. There's like MDOT's family that want justice and things like that. And then there's the oldest telling us, yeah, you got to do this, you got to do that. It's the environment, in it? Like, if we're going to start, we're going to come back to the hood every day, we're going to come back to the girls every day, we're going to hear the oldest and our ears tell us, what, you man ain't done nothing. Go do this, go do that. And we're going to go on the roads and there's going to be parents like, rah, like, don't go out there, don't do the same, cherish this, like, it's too much messages through our head, like, it's too much to do. Myron's friends can... In the wake of Myron's death, conflicting voices in the community highlight the difficult choices that these young people have to make. There's like MDOT's family that want justice and things like that. And then there's the oldest telling us, yeah, you got to do this, you got to do that. It's the environment, innit? Like, if we're going to start, we're going to come back to the hood every day, we're going to come back to the girls every day, we're going to hear the oldest and our ears tell us, what, you man ain't done nothing. Go do this, go do that. And we're going to go on the roads and there's going to be parents like, rah, like, don't go out there, don't do the same, cherish this, like, it's too much messages through our head, like, it's too much to do. Myron's friends can see how his murder is affecting the community and they fear for the future. Everyone's scared, I swear everyone's scared. In the community highlight the difficult choices that these young people have to make. There's like MDOT's family that want justice and things like that. And then there's the oldest telling us, yeah, you got to do this, you got to do that. It's the environment, innit? Like, if we're going to start, we're going we're to come back to the hood every day, we're going to come back to the girls every day, we're going to hear the oldest and our ears tell us, what, you man ain't done nothing. Go do this, go do that. And we're going to go on the roads and there's going to be parents like, rah, like, don't go out there, don't do the same, cherish this, like, it's too much messages through our head, like, it's too much to do.
Myron's friends can see how his murder is affecting the community, and they fear for the future. Everyone's scared. I swear everyone's scared. People are just not thinking and that, that. When one person dies, everyone from that side thinks it's time for retaliation. They're going to retaliate. You're going to hear someone from them sides die. You understand? That's how just bodies keep on getting dropped and it's just not going to change. It's just going to keep on... I think it's going to get worse. The cost of gang culture is not just being felt in terms of lives lost, but also families being shattered. After seven months and three attempts to convict to get out. Fucking die, but he did die. If people are onto you, then your life's basically getting shorted. From back in the day, I've been on the road to that. So when I started to really get into it, I couldn't really get out of it. But there was no point. If I had my chance to get out of it, I would have got out of it. Now, when you're young, it will start with stuff like these type of nice or wrong kitchen, something like that. As you get to an OG, I dare say, then you grab a gun. Car. If you're like a big man, you're only rather nice to them. What are you still doing on these roads? Cairo and vulnerable young boys like him are entangled in the lifestyle. Their close proximity to this dangerous world in turn creates doubts about exactly where they stand. Cairo, you're not in the gang. You might, you might call yourself something or you got, you might, you got moved and you were just dropping dead around me. You like, you have to wonder who's going to die next. You have to look at each other and say, you're wrong, man. I don't matter if you're nice or not these days. Because everybody just trying to... If any time there's a fight, no one doesn't know how to just use their hand. Everybody wants to always do the coward thing. No, no, but it's because you know that someone else is going to have it. It's like you have to. It's not even a thing that you can say yes or no to. It's like you have to be about that life or you're just going to be a... You're just going to get bullied. Mum. Move, man, and don't... <laughs> <laughs> But Shireen is also aware that given the increasing danger on the streets, young people are taking drastic measures to protect themselves. I'm not naive to what's going on out there. I know what these boys do. I just, I know. I'm a person, no, I check my knife on my jaw. Like some people don't. If you ask them, they don't know um, how many knives or what's gone missing. I know what's missing. Ask Cairo. We're going to draw see something. We were telling you, you would listen. But the gang's voices are always stronger because that's what washes your brain out. They wash your brain with lies and this and that, and that's what that's what it's supposed to do, because that's their job. In the borough of Lewisham, New Cross, known as Ghetto to some young locals, is one of the toughest neighbourhoods in London and has a long history of gang-related problems. She says she wanna flex with some young man. Says she wanna flex with me. She wanna flex. She says she wanna flex with some bad youth. Says she wanna flex with me. Today, for many young people regrettably caught up in the slipstream of the culture, music plays a pivotal role in them finding a way to escape its pool. Music is my life and that's it's how it's always going to be. Music is the thing that will calm me down and get me hyped. Music is... As a talented artist, Myron attended a performing arts college, a world away from knives, guns, and gangs. But this inescapable culture in his environment was the root cause of his death. This culture makes it normal for teenagers to use knives to settle the most minor of quarrels. Myron's friends are still struggling to come to terms with his senseless killing. Hello. I'm with them. I had my own little problems with them, innit? I had my own little madnesses I've had with them. Would it have been different if 
Like, I never went in the studio that day. If I came up there, it probably wouldn't have happened in it. But I could obviously tell the youths, no, that can't run in it. Or I don't know, it could have been me getting stabbed. I don't know, man. In 2015, there were 81 incidents of knife crime involving young people in the bar of Lewis alone. Gang culture is having a very real and increasingly dangerous effect on the community. Well, I'm 16 and I've seen six people get stabbed and killed. I don't know how to feel something like it's too normal. I've lived it for my whole life. It's, the, it's all I've seen since I've grown up. You know, I could have just been living a normal life for a teenager. But then again, this is normal life for a teenager. To gain further insight into this culture and its harsh realities, a current London gang member shared with us what... Good rap. Good rap. Believe it. Try to kill me in time right there. Kyra and Myron are used to being insulted in this way when seen together with their friends. She was just probably on a bad day or something. I don't know, man, but it's because some people in the block, yeah, when they see all of us in a the block, they don't like it because that's where they live, innit? Everyone has their mouth to talk, innit? So they're free to talk what they want to talk. But we know what we know and we're going to go as far as we want to go. Mm, we probably go further than her and her, Oh, man. She's mm. living in the block, man. We're trying to get out of the block. She's still in the block. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Trying to get out of the block. No way. Yeah, my name is famous. That's makes me feel good, innit? Like I'll do something good. So, yeah. We just need to keep on doing it. One day we'll be there. One day we'll get everyone out of the hood. One day we're gonna do it. The boys are in good spirits. But just a day earlier, things were very different for Cairo and his friends. Me on my way to video shoot, the doggy them. <laughs> People are scared. People are just not thinking and that, that. When one person dies, everyone from that side thinks it's time for retaliation. They're going to retaliate. You're going to hear someone from them sides die. You understand? That's how just bodies keep on getting dropped and it's just not going to change. It's just going to keep on. I think it's going to get worse. The cost of gang culture is not just being felt in terms of lives lost, but also families being shattered. After seven months and three attempts to convict those accused of killing her son, Sharon has been given the news she has been hoping to avoid. The liaison officer called me and said to me that the CPS was saying that I cannot go for another trial. They think we don't need a third trial because the jury failed twice to reach the verdict. No, I can't live with it. I can't live with it. These two boys are supposed to be just walk through the door just like that and my child life is gone. From the start to the end, it's on the CCTV straight. An eyewitness was there who saw them. And the jury failed twice to reach the verdict and the system also fails. Where is the justice? Is that the law? Is that the rule? I am here and I will fight for my son. I need justice. Justice, it have to happen for my son, for Shaquan. It's a massive blow to a mother seeking a sense of meaning in the tragic loss of a child. But her resolve is unwavering. Justice has been done, but she wants a better outcome. All of the problem, it's about gang and drugs. You understand? So it will continue if it doesn't have a solution. It have to have a stop. Because if you have kids, you will never want your kids to die in vain just like that. Come on. Enough is enough. I swear everyone's scared. God forbid, but who's he gonna take next? That's that's just what I think. Like it's like we're losing everyone that was close to us. If you or anyone you know has been affected by any of the topics raised in this program, go to channel5.com slash gangland for more information and support. In just a moment, Major League Confrontation. The Campaign will take it away, crew. Stay with us.